I'd like to call the meeting to order. And I'd like to start us off with a moment of silent prayer or reflection. I'll now close the time with saying amen. And it's time for the roll call. Carrie? Archana Aliar? Here. Carrie Duran? Here. Kyle Niederman? Here. Lisa Ramon? Here. John Madsen? Here. And now, if you'll stand and join me in the pledge. I, I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, United States of America, of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now I'll go to item two and I'll take a motion to review and accept the. Yes. Yes. And that brings us to um, item three, which are the action items. 3.1, Dr. Stone. It is my pleasure this evening to recommend that the Governing Board approve the appointment of Mrs. Nina Mersing as the Principal of Smoke Tree Elementary. Mrs. Mersing has been selected to be the next Principal of Smoke Tree Elementary. She always dreamt of becoming a teacher since she was a young child. She earned her bachelor's degree in education in 2007 from Northern Arizona University and began her teaching career at Starline Elementary. During her time at Starline, she taught first grade, second grade, and the K-6 after-school English language learner tutoring program. After five years at Starline, she transferred to Nautilus Elementary, where she taught for eight more years in first and third grade. While teaching at Nautilus, Mrs. Mersing earned her national board certification, which inspired her to continue her education and develop her leadership skills. In 2019, she completed her master's in educational leadership from Grand Canyon University. She completed a second master's in special education through Western Governors University in November of 2020. Mrs. Mersing is an exceptional teacher, driven leader, and consummate professional. With little notice, Mrs. Mersing agreed to leave her classroom and work this year as Smoke Tree Elementary School's interim principal. She has done an exceptional job leading Smoke Tree Elementary School through this difficult time. Mrs. Mersing has lived in Lake Havasu City since 1997 she has raised six children with her husband, Michael. All six of her children have graduated from Lake Havasu High School. She also has six grandchildren, and when Nina isn't focused on supporting students, she enjoys boating and camping. She is excited about continuing to serve the Smoke Tree School community. I'll accept questions or a motion. I move to approve 3.1 as presented. Seconded. Yes. Lisa Ramon? Yes. Kyle Niederman? Yes. Eric Ramon? Yes. John Madsen? Absolutely yes. Okay, let's go to 3.2. So this evening, I am also recommending the Director of Student Achievement. Just as a reminder, this is not a new position, but rather a name change from the Director of Educational Services to Director of Student Achievement. So it is also my pleasure this evening to recommend that the Governing Board approve the appointment of Mrs. Jamie Festadago as the Director of Student Achievement. Mrs. Festadago brings 20 years of experience in education to the position of Director of Student Achievement. Mrs. Festadago started her teaching career in 2000 as a high school ESOL teacher in Phoenix. She joined the Lake Havasu Unified School District in 2001 as a middle school language arts teacher and subsequently moved to the high school. During her 11 years as a high school teacher, Jamie taught civics, AP, 
Government Economics Dual Enrollment, Government Macroeconomics High School Marketing teacher, and she was a student government advisor. Mrs. Festadego has also served as a high school online social studies teacher. In 2013, Mrs. Festadego became an assistant principal at the high school, and in 2018, she became the director of personnel and technology. She has worked collaboratively with teachers and principals to redesign the teacher evaluation instrument and is currently leading the redesign of the principal evaluation instrument. She has implemented principal professional development and support and has worked to support systemic thinking and a high degree of customer service within the department she leads. Mrs. Festadego is adept at working with teams and leading teams with many key stakeholders. She has demonstrated ethical and innovative leadership over the last seven years as an administrator at the building and district levels. Her example of lifelong learning, her passion for our district and education, and her commitment to the success of our students, staff, and community make her the ideal candidate for the Director of Student Achievement. Do we have questions or a motion? I'll make a motion to accept Agenda 3.2 as presented. Second. Yes. Eric Horan? Yes. Kyle Yes. Yes. John Yes. Mr. Murray, it's your turn for 3.3. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the board. It is recommended the governing board approve the compensation package for the 2021-2022 school year. This compensation proposal for the 21-22 school year provides the following. A base salary increase of $1,000 for certified staff working 188 to 225 days. A base salary increase of $1,200 for certified staff working 226 days to 261 days. An hourly increase of 40 cents per hour for classified staff. A one-time cost of living adjustment of 4.5% for all employees paid by two separate checks on two dates established during the 21-22 fiscal year. District paid annual medical benefit premiums will increase from $9,417.96 to approximately $9,575.88. An EPO and high deductible health plan uh, options are available to employees and their qualified dependents. If an employee elects the high deductible health plan, the district will contribute $694.80 to the employee's health savings account, which is just the difference between the EPO plan and the high deductible health plan. The district will also maintain current athletic participation fees. Uh, additional compensation includes classroom site funds, where we'll continue to fund classroom site funds per the legal guidelines. Fund 13 of classroom site funds, we will uh, take $106.25 per 301 eligible employee per month to continue to supplement insurance premiums. And funds remaining after the allocations will become part of the overall carry forward for the district's uh, respective classroom site fund categories. And that'll be used in the next fiscal year for the benefit of all current 301 eligible certified staff. Salary and benefit proposals were discussed through a district budget committee comprised of administrators, certified and classified staff, as well as appointed governing board members. The committee met on February 24th, May 3rd, and March 10th. The backup for this item was provided to the governing board members prior to the March 31st meeting. I also have a PowerPoint following your action. Do we have questions on 3.3 or a motion? I move that we accept 3.3 as presented. I'll second. I would like to uh, uh, have some discussion with it though. Uh, first thing I'd like to do is uh, thank the, thank the um, governing board here for allowing me to attend those meetings. Uh, both Kyle and I were able to the, attend the meetings and I was very impressed. Uh, I think it's worth uh, mentioning since these are recorded and for anybody out there who wants to listen a little bit about what went on. Uh, most of the decisions that were made uh, were made by a, a group of what we said uh, really comprised uh, certified, non-certified administrators. Uh, and what was very interesting to me was that the common consensus of the group 
was every decision that they made was with the uh, lens of how would it help the kids. And in this particular case, how can we recruit teachers? What were the best decisions that we could do with the budgets uh, to do that? And this was uh, a lot of times with uh, a lot of the folks on the committee there, the more established ones, and going with a percentage raise rather than a base raise would have helped them more, but going with a base raise helps us recruit teachers more. They made that decision almost unanimously to do that, and I think that was uh, very interesting to watch and, and learn. So I support this budget, kind of uh, seeing the process in that manner. Do you, want me to, do you want me to review the PowerPoint just real quick for the last meeting? I can just go through 10 slides It's real probably fast. a good idea for, that, for yeah. the public. So this, this is the last day. You can see it was dated March 10th. I reformatted it to, to a different PowerPoint slide um, for appearance purposes. Um, but you can see that we did talk about um, just finance updates, what the state funding possibilities are. You can see that... Uh, Inflation increase to support to the support level, still not fully established yet. It's approximately 1.22 percent that we'll receive next year in inflation funding. Um, moving $40 uh, per the statewide uh, per statewide student from Prop 301 to the base, uh, which was part of the governor's last part of the 20 by 2020 plan, instead of fully funding the 5 percent of the last part of the 20 by 2020, 20% 20 by 2020. Um, part of that was pushed into classroom site funds instead of added to the base. That $40 roughly per student um, will come back out of 301 and go to the base formula. Um, you can see that approximately $80 uh, with the inflation factor and the monies m removed from Prop 301 and put to the base support will be added. Um, it'll generate approximately $525,000 in new support level budget capacity for next year, and all of that is contingent upon student enrollment. Uh, ASRS, we talked about uh, employees uh, who retired after August 2nd, 2012 will no longer be eligible to receive a premium benefit. This will be discussed on, a f on an upcoming action item, um, which is approximately $80,000 a year for those who fall into that category for the district. Um, this is just a, a snapshot of the NAEBT premiums showing what the EPO and the high deductible health plan would cost for the different categories employee only, employee spouse, employee family, the retiree. You can see that going across the columns. Uh, that second section there is the dollar difference um, between this current year's uh, premium rates and then next year's premium rates. So you can see that the employee only coverage for the EPO plan will go up $11.16 a month. And you can see how that um, calculates through the different groups. This is the uh, premium uh, for internal purposes for our, our office to be able to fund the uh, benefits accordingly to make sure that proper dollar amounts are taken out of an employee's biweekly pay. You can see how that uh, comes to be for the EPO plan. And again, how it calculates out on the high deductible health plan. Part of the process is we did talk um, and actually have committee members um, share part of their role and responsibility as a budget committee member is to report uh, to their sites, to relay information to them, receive information from those at their sites, and then come back to the committee to, to share out. Uh, some of the reported priorities are listed here, uh, base salaries being very consistent across the board, uh, salaries for retention of staff com uh, being competitive within the region, salaries to address cost of living, um, benefits are obviously something that's always high priority, staffing, cost of living adjustment to basically help out with some of that cost of living and retention of staff, counselors, nurses, uh, distant learning and classroom materials were just some of the 
uh, items that were brought back for discussion. We did talk about um, consideration. So as we as a budget committee were meeting together to consider certain things when, when trying to uh, establish a compensation package that, that would be beneficial for all. Again, on, on the uh, previous slide or a couple slides earlier, we talked about ASRS no longer offering the retiree benefit. Um, we talked about, um, as Mr. Aran just uh, mentioned, the difference between a, pre a percentage increase for all staff or a flat dollar amount for all staff. Um, fully funding employee benefits, making sure that we are fully funding benefits or do we perhaps only fund 80% and then be creative with how we move some of that money towards salaries, um, knowing that the employee would then have to pick up some of the cost of benefits. Uh, also something to consider um, is to then look at 301 and how 301 monies are distributed to help get money into our eligible teaching staff uh, to get that to them on a bi-weekly basis versus three times a year like we have been funding it or dis distributing it uh, to consider possibly taking two thousand dollars immediately out of fund 11 and 13 and then or at least earmarking that and distributing two thousand dollars out across uh, 18 or 24 pays whatever the employee elects so that they're getting their portion of 301 monies um, more timely versus having to wait for November, March, and June to roll around to get paid their portion of the 301 funds. It showed just the, the history of 301 over the many years and how, how much money has been distributed for each year. We got into budget proposals. So we had four different proposals, a proposal A, B, C, and D. You can see how we look to address the increase to benefits and then considering a district subsidy of the ASRS premium benefit loss, the cost to do your base increase for certified staff and then the cost of your 40 cent an hour increase for classified staff and then noting the one-time uh, cost of living adjustment, which we have been doing at 5%. Proposal B, much of the same thing, but you'll see that we actually added the $80,000 subsidy loss from ASRS and budgeting for that, that the district would actually come up with this dollar amount. And then as a result, perhaps decreasing base increases or base salary increases and decreasing the hourly rate for support staff. Proposal C was much like proposal A, except for the fact that we changed from base salary increases of a flat dollar amount to a percentage. And you could see what that would do in the range. So uh, our staff who are um, maybe more towards the entry level position of, of teaching would only receive $720 annually versus someone more at the higher end would receive a bigger, a bigger portion of or a larger amount of funds. Same thing is to be said around the classified staff and their hourly increases. If we went with a 2% increase, you can see the difference per hour from someone who is in more entry level to someone who's been around a lot longer and maybe a, a different skill set um, and job responsibility. Proposal D, again, same thing, except we added the 880,000 there to cover the ASRS premium benefit loss, changed the percentage increase to one and a half percent, and then you could see what that did to those figures. So ultimately, the budget committee came back um, pretty much almost unanimously, and this is what they are proposing. It's what I just uh, read to you in the action item. The only addition here that you see on this slide, which will be addressed in another action item coming up, would be in that lower right-hand corner um, to look at perhaps subsidizing that retiree benefit uh, the, or the absence of it um, and what that would look like over the next few years, fiscal years. But again, that'll be another action item. 
And then finally, uh, we talked about future conversations regarding um, the need to still go out and engage the community um, with the reality that the override will be expiring here in another couple of years. This next fiscal year, the one that's before you tonight, is the last year of the fully funded 15% override at 100%. Um, the next fiscal year, 23, will be reduced funding at two-thirds the amount. And then in fiscal year 24, it will be one-third the amount. And then in fiscal year 25, there will no longer be an override uh, unless it is renewed. So that's the future uh, conversations to have and to consider to um, begin the prep work in determining whether or not or how to um, address the, uh, revisit the override um, scenario and situation. Yes. 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 Absolutely yes. Uh, Jamie Festa, are you ready? I'm ready. Mr. President and Governing Board, it is recommended the Governing Board approve employment for 21-22 school year for the following certified administrative and supervisor staff. Uh, behind this, teachers, counselors, speech therapists, speech technicians, psychologists, directors, administrators, and coordinator lists follow. It is also recommended that the governing board approve the staff moving from non-continuing status to continuing status in the 21-22 school year. It is also recommended the governing board approve the 21-22 teacher contract. There have been no changes from 2021. I'm interested in a motion. I move that we approve 3.4 as presented. I'll second. We've got a motion and a second. Any questions? Yes. 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 And then next one is yours too, Jamie. Mr. President and Governing Board, it is recommended the Governing Board approve the following support positions with the district for the 21-22 school year. And this is all support staff. It is recommended that the governing board approve the 21-22 support staff contracts notice at will employment. Do I have questions or a motion? I move that we accept this is presented. I second. Okay, are Janet Aliar? Yes. Kyle Niederman? Yes. Yes. Harry yes. Yes. And then Mr. Murray, next one's yours. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the board. It is recommended the governing board retroactively approve a district provided retiree insurance benefit subsidy and phased subsidy reduction plan. The district completes the, the Arizona State Retirement System Employer Health Insurance Plan premium breakdown table annually. This year, the payroll department noticed, noticed a change to the form. The form shows a revision date of January 29th, 2020. The form included the question, is any portion of this premium being paid by the employer with a simple yes or no response? The question is followed by a note which references Arizona Revised Statute 38-783. The payroll department did reach out to ASRS to seek clarification on the revised form. After several emails and phone conversations with ASRS, it was confirmed that those who retired after August 2nd, 2012 are not eligible for premium benefit payments from ASRS. The reason behind it is the district does pay a portion of eligible retiree insurance premiums. As a result, retirees are not eligible to receive ASRS premium benefit payments of $150 a month for the retiree and a total of $110 a month for any and all dependents that a retiree is insuring. As this was discovered after the start of the school year in communication to seek clarification and attempts to appeal based on verbiage contained in statute, the district is seeking retroactive approval to subsidize the premium benefit for fiscal year 21. 
The district also proposes a phase subsidy reduction to assist retirees in adjusting to the absence of the ASRS premium benefit. The proposed phased subsidy for the $150 a month for the retiree and a total of $110 a month for any and all dependents that a retiree is insuring is as follows. This fiscal year 21 that we do a retroactive 100% subsidy coverage. Next fiscal year, again 100%. Fiscal year 23, 50%. And then fiscal year 24, a 0% phase down. This item has been reviewed by the business department and legal. Okay, do we have any questions or a motion? I move to approve 3.6. Second. And I do have a couple of questions. I just want to make sure I understand. Um, okay, so if, if our district did not subsidize retirement benefits at all, then this would not apply to us, but the portion that ARS, ASRS funds is significantly less than what we give, Absolutely, correct? that's correct. Okay. And then it's $150 per retiree, and then a total of 110 for de for dependents. So that's whether they have one or 10 dependents. Hopefully they're not retired with 10 dependents, but um, <laughs> that's it, correct. regardless, it's a sum total of $110. That's correct. Okay. Um, I think that's it for my questions. Yes. 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 And that brings us to announcements. I've got one good announcement that I have to give, and that is on Tuesday, April 13th at 6 p.m., right here at the PAC at Havasu High School, we're going to have another meeting. Aren't you all excited? <laughs> and with that, I'll take a uh, adjournment motion. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Second. Lisa Lamont? Yes. Eric Moran? Yes. Kyle Niederman? Yes. Martina Yes. John Manson? Absolutely yes. We're done.